Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're a regular viewer of my videos and the DRI BMS project, you'll know all about the current monitor device I built, which provides battery state of charge and current measuring. A number of people have been in touch to highlight issues in getting parts to build these devices. Unfortunately, I don't have a simple answer for that, as most of the parts are limited due to the world shortage of silicon chips. However, in light of this, I've added support for another current monitor device, the delightfully named PZEM017. This device is found all over AliExpress and provides basic current and voltage monitoring using uh, RS485 and Modbus protocols. These features make it a good fit to integrate with a DIY BMS controller. It's also a really low cost device. It's around sort of 20 US dollars, including the shunt. However, just to warn you, it doesn't have all the same features as the native DIY BMS current monitor. This is what you receive in the box. I'll put some links to the AliExpress shop I bought this from in the description. This is the controller. You also get an RS485 to USB adapter and the shunt. I bought the 300 amp version, but you can also get 50, 100 and 200 amp versions. You can see the current rating is marked on the shunt along with the 75 volt um, or millivolt marking. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. It's quite a small single sided PCB. On the left, we have the shunt and power inputs, which seem to go through some sort of passive filtering um, and then feed directly into the microcontroller. Above the micro is the power supply and a 5, oh no, sorry, a 3.3 volt regulator chip. Uh, we also have an EE prompt to store the calibration and configuration settings for the microcontroller. I suspect this is a one time pro programmable device, which doesn't have its own flash memory. The markings on the microcontroller have been rubbed off. On the right, we have the RS485 interface with the power A and B connections. Um, it seems to use the MAX485 chip for the communications and has two optimized isolators to separate the signals away from the higher voltage side of the current monitor. Whilst examining the circuit under a microscope, I noticed that I had a capacitor that was not correctly soldered. It had tombstoned and stood up vertically. I fixed this by resoldering the capacitor but it really shouldn't have left the factory in this state. If you buy one of these devices, I do recommend taking the cover off and having a look at the build quality before you power it up. This is how you connect up the current shunt to the controller. I'm using very short wires here to demonstrate, but obviously you can use longer wires as needed. Make sure you have the RS485 connection block on the current shunt. Look on the bottom of the device for information. We connect the 5 volt positive and ground connections and then the RS485 A and B connections. However, notice that the current shunt has the A and B switched over compared to the controller. Ah, I almost forgot to mention, um, you also need to put a termination resistor onto the current monitor side of the circuit. This is a 120 ohm resistor and should be placed across the A and B connections. I'm using two resistors here to get the correct value, but you don't have to copy me. Now for the shunt side, um, for this video I'm going to use a bench power supply and a light bulb to demonstrate the connections. Obviously you are connected to your battery and your load or charger. The shunt resistor is connected to the lower two connections on the device. I'm using a uh, hook up wire here in this example, but I recommend you use uh, ring terminals to connect this up. Now the negative connection is made to the top of the shunt. We also need to supply a negative connection to the monitor. Over to the positive, um, and this is connected to the monitor, which goes to the positive side of the battery or the supply. And then finally, the bottom of the shunt, which is negative, goes to the negative on my load. In my case, the light bulb. Fingers crossed when I power this on, everything works. 
Now we have the DIY BMS controller connected to the PZEM17 and it's connected to the shunt and the load. After downloading and installing the new firmware for the controller from GitHub, we can see an immediate change in the top left corner, which is the new logo. Thank you to user M2K from Spain who created this for me. To configure the current monitoring, open up the current monitor settings page. Change the RS485 options to use 9600 speed, 8 data bits, no parity and 2 stop bits. Then click save uh, and then wait a few seconds for the page to reload. Now we can enable the current monitoring. Select the PSFAIR device and its Modbus address, which is usually 1. Now we can click the uh, Save Connection Settings and hopefully the communications will begin. And we start to see current and voltage data appear on screen. As you can see here, I'm using a 12 volt power supply and a 5 watt LED bulb, which are reported correctly by the shunt. You can configure which shunt you have using the shunt maximum current drop down list. Only certain values are available, um, but these match the ones supplied by PSFAIR. All of the values are actually meaningless for this, this uh, device. Which brings me on to the limitations of this setup. The voltage and current are measured, but nothing else. So there's no state of charge or amp hour count counting. Additionally, the current monitor cannot determine the direction of the current flow, so you don't know if the current is charging or discharging the battery. Even though there are limitations, I can still see some valid reasons for using this device. And you can also use the values it supplies to control the relays uh, and the rules. And it also outputs the values into Influx or MQTT. A big thank you to my Patreon supporters who helped fund the research and development of new ideas and solutions just like this one. If you'd like to become a Patreon, the link is in the description of the video. If you are interested in energy, solar and battery projects, along with the occasional random video, hit the subscribe button. And if this video has been useful to you, please click the like as well. Thanks for watching.